Grace and peace from our Lord Jesus Christ be multiplied unto you. I want to welcome you to another wonderful, exciting episode of Sunday School. And like I used to say, any class of Sunday School you miss is like a treasure that is thrown in the ocean. And I really want to thank you for joining us this day. Thanks for the subscribe. Thanks for the questions. Thanks for the likes. Thanks for the comments. We really do appreciate every one of those things that you've done for us. Thank you for all that you do. We really do appreciate you. And don't forget, I'm your host for today i'm aki kunle akinla last week was a wonderful time because last week we had to just look at all the lessons we've done so far in in 15 lessons and now we're starting with the last quarter of our sunday school before we move into another academic year or another academic session so we have a series of lessons that we'll be dealing with from now up until the first week of september and i promise you that it promises to be a wonderful time in god's presence it promises to be a refreshing time as we'll be looking at various things various lessons from our sunday school today promises to be a wonderful time as we'll be looking at the preaching of the gospel the preaching of the gospel the bible says something about the gospel of our lord jesus christ is the power and the wisdom of god and if you hear anything that talks about the power and at the same time the wisdom of god it is something that you really need to pay attention to because it's going to open your eyes into another revelation and knowledge of our lord jesus christ before we go into what we have for today our, our opening prayer today says father Help me to be an incurable witness for Christ. Let us pray in the name of Jesus that God will help us to be an incurable witness for Christ. A hardened soul winner that will continue to propagate the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. The Bible says something that it is the desire and the will of God that all men be saved. Father, use me for that your kingdom's assignment. Use me to fulfill your purpose, your mandate here and that. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen. Thank you one more time for joining us on this wonderful episode. Our topic today says the preaching of the gospel. The preaching of the gospel. To lay a foundation, what is the gospel? The gospel is the message of our Lord Jesus Christ. And anytime you hear about the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, there's something about the, the, the message of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's a message of the good news. It brings glad tidings and it has an eternal purpose that all men be saved, that none should perish. Our memory verse for today is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 16. It says, For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. He says, for though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. If we go to the pages of the scripture, what this uh, this memory verse is saying unto us is that even if we preach the gospel, there's nothing that we need to boast about. Because naturally speaking, as you are looking at me now, you have hair in your nostrils, you breathe air. Is it something that um, you, you need to start boasting about that I can do this? We need to give glory unto God. But there are some things that is actually required of us. And those things are things that we need to do. It is a necessity. It, it is a commandment. It is a mandate given unto us. Like providing food on the table for your kids. These are normal things that needs to be done. We know that we need to give glory to God that he, he has given us the, the, the capacity to do all of these things. But there are some things that are just normal things they're, they're like the routine that one needs to follow and when you follow those routine it is nothing that you have to start glorying it have you seen what i have done have you seen this that i have done it is not about that so it's seen that the preaching of the gospel of our lord jesus christ it is what that needs to be part of me it is nothing that i need to start talking about i preached the gospel yesterday i need to do this it should be embedded in me it should be a lifestyle and whatever becomes a lifestyle, it is what has become part of you because it has mixed with your flesh and blood. So he's saying that I preach the gospel. I have nothing to glory of because necessity is laid upon me. This is what I have to do. And if I don't do this assignment, then, 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 then Apostle Paul said, woe is unto him. And this is also an encouragement to each and every one of us that we need to take this assignment 
The Lord Jesus Christ gave us two things before he departed. He gave us the great commission and the great commandment. The commission is for us to go all out there and preach the gospel. And the commandment is for us to do all of those things. And then we teach men to do all of those things. God will help us in Jesus' mighty name. Our introduction says, shortly after the baptism and wilderness experiences of Jesus Christ, his earthly ministry started with the preaching of the gospel and ended with the commissioning of disciples for the same assignment. So we see that there's nothing that Jesus Christ has committed into our hands in which he has not walked through the path. And experience says that when you see somebody actually walk through a path in which you want to, then you need to take a clue from the person so that there are some pitfalls, there are some errors that may want to be in place. But if, you've, if, if you're taking clue from somebody who has gone through that path, then you avoid all those pitfalls. Before Jesus Christ started his earthly ministry, he went through a process of baptism and the wilderness experience. So it is important that having given your life to Jesus Christ, you need to identify with the, 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 the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. So after you've identified with that, then you can now say that, okay, you now want to launch into that. And another thing also, also that I would just quickly like to point out is this. The moment you've given your life to Jesus Christ, you don't need to, to, for any man to come and tell you that you need to preach the gospel. It should be part and parcel of you. There's no need to say, okay, I'm waiting for the divine call of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us that great commission and the great commandment that we preach the gospel. And we can see that according to Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 20. It says, without doubt, this must have been an issue topmost in the heart of our Lord Jesus Christ for all generations. So we can see that this is one of the issues that has been on the mind of our Lord Jesus Christ that everybody do. Whether you are old, whether you are young, whether you are this big or whatever, irrespective of your echelon or irrespective of your class or your classisms, that has nothing to do. The moment you've given your life to Jesus Christ, then you have to partake in the assignment of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's go into our Bible reading for today. Our Bible reading for today is taken from Mark chapter 16. And I'm going to read from verse 15 to 20. 15 to 20. The Bible says, And I said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So it is, it is an assignment that has been given unto us that we should go all out there into the world. A man cannot win the world, but if we as a group, as a people that has been saved, washed, cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ, if we all go into our geopolitical zones, into our various areas, then we can go for the same mandate, for the same assignment. Knowing fully well that the body of Christ is not divided, but we all have to go and win our geopolitical zones. He says, he that believed and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. So we can see another two things there that not for you to believe only. There is a need for you to be baptized. And that is where you will be saved. So we're talking about baptism by immersion. There's baptism of the Holy Ghost. There's baptism of the Spirit. But we're talking about the baptism by immersion. So you come, you receive the gospel, you believe it, then you'll be baptized, then you shall be saved. And it says... And this signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils and speak with new tongues. So we see that the moment you believe, it is not until when you are ordained as a pastor, as a bishop, as an apostle, or as anything. The minimum criteria that is given to every man is, and this signs shall follow them. This signs, it is a token. This signs shall follow them that believe. So when you believe that Jesus Christ has come to save me, Jesus Christ has come to redeem me, the moment that you believe it, there is a sign that will follow you. It is like a seal of Christ on you. Shall follow them that believe that in my name shall they cast out devils and speak with new tongues. So the moment that you've given your life to Jesus Christ and you believe him as your personal Lord and Savior, the, the anointing that works in the miracle, the miraculous anointing is already resident in you. Then you have that mandate. You can cast out devils. 
You speak with new tongues. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is also another important thing that needs to be done. But the condition to fulfill is for you to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, and they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So we can still see that for you to walk in the miraculous, for you to walk signs and wonders, it is just for you to believe. When you believe, you lay your hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Before, before we, we see some of the great things that the apostles actually did, when they received power from on high, you can see some of the things that Peter did. And they got to a point that his shadows were healing the sick. So for us as Christians, taking the word of our Lord Jesus Christ as, 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 the, as, as grounds for us to do things, for you to believe, after you believe, you cast out devils. You drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt you. You lay your hands on the sick and they will recover. And nothing shall by any means hurt you because you believe. So it is now Christ walking in you through to his people. He says, so then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into the heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following. So the word of our Lord Jesus Christ is not a word that will fall. He said, none of my word will fall to the ground except it has accomplished that which I have sent it. So we can see that after Taking that assignment, not that he has given us this mandate to go preach and I'm sitting. The signs, the anointing, the, the manifestation of the grace of God, the manifestation of the miraculous on you is after you have gone forth. So for you to see that aspect of the miraculous workings of the anointing of God in your life, you need to go forth into the field. And it says, and they went forth and preached everywhere and the Lord walking with them. So the Lord has not come to give you the assignment only. God is also part of you. He's walking in you because it's spirit is in you and he's walking with them and confirming the word with signs following so every word that he has spoken unto you that to go out to preach the gospel there is a sign that will follow you to show the manifestation of the working of our lord jesus christ are you in that space now you're saying that you don't know how to do it all you have to do is to step out in faith go out in faith believe in the word of our lord jesus because jesus christ will never put you to shame though he has gone to be with the lord he's seated in the heavenly places but his word is still with you because it's confirming them with signs following so forget about your accolades forget about your degrees forget about the english forget about your classism ageism forget about all of those things it is just for you to obey and you obey to the letter then you begin to see we've heard of some preachers that the first miracle they ever performed in their life was done in the field so many people will say that we want the anointing we want the manifestation of the power of god i tell you those things that you're waiting for you begin to encounter them and you begin to see them when you go out to preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have various means in which you can preach the, Lord, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is one means in which I am doing mine. There are some people that are behind the cameras making this thing work. They are doing their own assignment. There's somebody that is making the mixing work. He is doing his own assignment. Everybody cannot take the pulpit, but there is a part that you can do that will make sure that you've contributed your own quota. The person that is standing in front of the camera and the person standing behind the cameras, they both have the same reward to do because they are working together to fulfill this great mandate what are you doing are you actually working in those things that god actually wants you to do are you supporting your pastor are you supporting the mission of god you have to rise up to that responsibility today because the assignment has been given to us that we all go out there to preach the gospel and there is signs and wonders that will follow that word so far you obey to the letter Let's go on to our first break. We will be right back with our two lesson outlines as we continue to look at the preaching of the gospel. The preaching of the gospel is the power and the wisdom of God to everyone that believes. God bless you. Welcome back from that break and if you're just joining us, you tune into Sunday School on our topic today, the preaching of the gospel. To go into our first outline, our first outline says a must for all believers, necessity of the gospel. We want to look at the Lord commanded all believers to preach the gospel. That's according to Matthew chapter 28 verse 18 to 20. So it is a commandment. 
that you and I, we have to go all out there to preach the gospel. We know that there are various means with which you can preach the gospel, but it is a commandment from our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24 says, we quickly go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 24, which is very, very important. It says, but unto them that are called, both the Jews and the Greek, Christ is the power and the wisdom of God. So we can say that the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is the power and the wisdom of God. And wisdom talks about the skillfulness in using things to actually answer questions. We can also see that it is, it is the skill in which you can manage affairs, not just the affairs of this earth, but divine assignment. So we see the power, that is the ability to be able to do things. So the preaching of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is what gives me the ability, the power, the energy, the, 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 the dunamis to be able to do things in, with skillfulness in every areas of my life. The Bible says something about Solomon, that Solomon is a man full of wisdom. We can see the wisdom of God operating in the life of a man that gave everything all over unto God. Now imagine if you have the wisdom of Christ in your hand and you have the power of Christ. You can move any mountain because you have the energy, you have the dunamis, you have the power, the ability to do work. It is resident on the inside of you, coupled with the wisdom, the divine wisdom that comes from God. You'll be able to do anything. So Christ is the power and the wisdom of God. Failure to preach the God will attract a curse according to our memory verse it says the next one the preaching of the gospel is mandatory duty to all believers we can see that according to second timothy chapter 4 verse 2 it says preach the word be instant in season be instant out of season it says rebuke reprove with all long suffering and doctrine so the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is what needs to be preached in season and out of season. There's nothing like the anointing is flowing today, the anointing is not flowing tomorrow. Uh, when it comes to the school of the spirit or to believers, you are always in season. There's nothing like you are out of season. You are not weather that changes. Patterns of weather is subject to change. It is spring today. It is summer tomorrow. It is winter tomorrow. But when it comes to halls that are saved by the power of God, there's nothing like it is winter it is summer it is spring we are always in season so we need to preach the gospel at all times we need to reprove we need to be able to reprove we need to be able to rebuke and god will help us in jesus mighty name the next one says through the gospel sinners weary and perishing souls can repent and obtain everlasting life. There's something that we also need to also understand. It says that he that believeth in the Son hath everlasting life. The moment you believe in our Lord Jesus Christ, you have everlasting life. And we need to understand that in this world in which we are, it is temporary. It is a temporary journey that we are doing. There is life after this, which is the everlasting life of God that God has breathed into me for me for an eternal purpose. So we see that the moment you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, then... You have life, eternity. And that is what Jesus Christ has come to bring unto you. He says, peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. And now says that eternal life he has come to give unto us. In as much as we have peace here on earth, but there's life after this. We talk about the eternal life with which God has come to give to them that believe. The only thing that qualifies you for that eternal life is when you believe. If you don't believe, you don't have access to that eternal life. I'm talking about life everlasting, a life that never fades, a life that has no sorrow, a life that has no pain, a life that has nothing to worry about. The cares of this world, the worries of this life has nothing to do with this eternal life because this eternal life is a complete part package that has come to you but it is only achievable and obtainable when you give your life to jesus christ and you believe in him the next point says the lord is the central message of the gospel so when we're talking about the gospel of our lord jesus christ Christ is the center of it all. There's a song that says Jesus at the center of it all. So the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is Christocentric. So everything is surrounded by Christ. So when I'm going to preach the gospel, I'm going to preach Christ. I'm going to proclaim Christ. I'm going to proclaim the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our next point says the Lord Jesus Christ is the one who pleads our cause with God the Father. Jesus Christ is the one who pleads our cause. And I want to quickly go into 1 John. We go into 1 John chapter 2 and verse 1 to 2 says, My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. 
you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. So we can see, it's commanding us that don't sin. But in case that you sin, we are not saying that you have to go and sin deliberately. In case you fall and you sleep, there's another provision in the constitution of our Lord Jesus Christ that has catered for that thing. And it says that Jesus Christ, that has been set as propitiations for our sin. So Jesus Christ is the Lamb of the, the Lamb of God that was slain right from the foundation of this world to do what? To take away the sins of men. And when Jesus Christ forgives, when you're washed by the blood, you are washed completely because you are justified as if you have never sinned before. He is in me justified. I am in him glorified. And that is what the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ has come to preach unto us. Even if you have sinned, Come, he's calling you back home. Oh, ye sinner, come back. Our Lord Jesus Christ is not a God that condemns. No, he's not a God that condemns. It is the devil that condemns. But he wants you to come and he was going to wash you with his blood because he has been set as propitiation. He has been set and as atonement, the sacrificial lamb that has come to take away the sins of the world. By revelation, John said, Behold the Lamb of God that has come to take away the sins of this world. What is that sin that you've committed and you think that God cannot forgive you? That is a lie from the pit of hell. The ability of God, the energy of God, the power of God, the dunamis of God, the workings of the Spirit of God is able to take away that sin that you've committed. All you have to do is come to the throne of grace and ask for mercy. Father, have mercy on me. I'll have mercy on whom I'll have mercy on, and I'll have compassion on whom I'll have compassion on. It is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth. It is of the Lord that showeth Moses. And he said that unto Moses. Come unto him as you are, and is willing and able to save you. He said the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sins. All sins. Every. There's no sin that the blood of Jesus cannot wash away. But before you can go and preach the gospel, you need to settle this with Christ. Be completely washed from all your sin. His ability, his power is enough to wash away every sin. Some people say, no, you don't know what I've done. No, 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 no. You are not understanding. I have done one, two, three, four, five, six. That is a pit from hell. The ability of God can wash away your sin. And he's going to present you to God crystal clear. That even is going to be like a speck to which, which, which you can see through a glass. You know when a glass is crystal clear, you can see through it. That is how Christ will wash you. As if you never committed any sin before. Come to him. He's able to save you. Believers in the Lord Jesus Christ must therefore preach the gospel and win souls to the kingdom. He say, he that win a soul is wise. And then they're turning many to righteous as shining stars forever. Do you want to be a shining star in your generation, in that office where you work, in that your church? Win souls. Because if you win soul, you are wise. And it is God that changes those that win a soul for him to stars forever. Uh, do you want to be a shining star? Start winning souls. The requirement for the assignment you know, to every assignment, there is a requirement that needs to be met. Just like when you want to start working, there, there are basic criteria that you need to meet that will put you on that platform with which you can now start doing the assignment. The first one is you need divine wisdom. That is skillfulness in everything you do. But that is only from God. The Bible says that according to James chapter 1, verse 5 to 8, it says he giveth wisdom to all liberally. He withholdeth not. He hideth not. He gives to any man. If you lack wisdom, he says you should come and ask him. It is him that will give unto you. So you need the divine wisdom of God because the truth is that when you go out into the field, you will be faced with so many circumstances and issues, but the wisdom of God, the resident in you, will help you to tackle all the issues of life. Just like when they brought that child before Solomon and he says, this child is my child. That one said, no, it is my child. Okay, get a sword. Let us split that child into. No, 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 don't do that to that child. When the child is grown, that child will definitely know the mother. That's the wisdom of God in the play in the life of a man. To be able to discern between wrong and right. And that is what we need to pray for. Are you a pastor? Are you a bishop? Are, are, are you a teacher of the word of God, an evangelist? You need the wisdom of God to help you to decipher the issues of this life so you can make right judgments and answer the questions the way God wants you to answer. God will help us in Jesus' name. Another criteria, another thing, you need to have a compassionate heart. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You need a compassionate heart, just like our Lord Jesus Christ, just like God. It is because of the compassionateness of his heart, that is why he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to come and save the world. Then you need the power of the Holy Spirit, and you shall receive power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And after receiving the power of the Holy Ghost, then you can now go all out there preaching the gospel. The gospel needs to be done 
with this approach of the power. You have to be endued with power from all night. But the power, the workings of the power, you can only see the manifestation of the workings of that power you've received when you get to the field. However, you need to be filled with the Spirit of God. You shall receive power, the ability to do, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You cannot go out there without the endowment of the power of the Holy Ghost. So you need that. And how you can get that, you need to tarry in the place of prayer. Just keep there, in that your watch room, in that your prayer time. Father, endow me with power from on high, so that I can do this assignment. This power that is needed, Father, endow me. And you see the, the evidence with speaking in tongues. Then you can see, Father, I thank you for this endowment. Then you go out to win souls. Let's continue until this short break. We'll come back with a second outline as we'll be wrapping up on our topic for today. The preaching of the gospel is the power and the wisdom of God. God bless you as you stay with us. from the break and if you're just joining us you tune into Sunday school on our topic today and we'll be looking at the second outline the first one says the message is simple like we've been saying the message of the gospel that needs to be preached is simple and the first one is Jesus is the moral which was from the beginning the Bible says in John chapter 1 and verse 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God so we know that Jesus is the moral which was from the beginning and the second one is that all souls belongs to god that's according to ezekiel chapter 18 verse 4 that says that all souls are mine so we need to understand that all souls belongs to god we know that there's actually something that separated god and the humans but jesus christ as we said as propitiation has now come to do or to bridge the gap so that all souls can return back unto him the third one says all souls have sinned according to Romans chapter 3 and verse 23. For all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. All souls have sinned. So it's just the message in which we need to preach. Then the fourth one says, Every soul that confess and repents from their sins will obtain mercy. According to Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13, 4 John chapter 1, verse 8 to 10. That if you can confess your sin, that our God is faithful and just. To forgive us. If any man say that he has no sin in him, he's nothing but a liar, and the truth is not in him. But if we can confess our sins, our God is faithful and just to do or to forgive us of all our sins. The fourth one says, Those who confessed and repented from their sins will obtain the gift of eternal life. Because we know that the wages of sin is dead, according to Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. But if you confess and you repent, so it is not enough to confess the sins, but you have to forsake the ways. You have to repent completely and not go back into that sin. Such a person will obtain the gift of eternal life. Eternal life is what we've been talking about. Eternal life is what we've been talking about. The last one says that the blood of Jesus Christ alone is the means by which sins of the old world can be washed away according to Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 14. We know that from the Old Testament, whenever they, an atonement needs to be made, they'll bring a, a, an animal without spot, without blemish, without any wrinkle. They'll bring, they'll confess the sins of the person. Then they will slaughter the animal. One will be left as a scapegoat, the other will be slaughtered. But every year that process is continued every year because the blood of bulls, the blood of animals cannot wash away the sins of humanity completely. So it needs to be done every year because when life is required, the blood of animal cannot be used as a replacement for that of animal. So it requires the blood of human to take away the blood of human. The blood of animals cannot do it. So Jesus Christ now came in the form of humanity to do what? To come and pay the ultimate sacrifice. Jesus is the one that paid the ultimate sacrifice. The blood of animals, the blood of bulls cannot wash away sins. They only cover it. After a year, you have to go again to repeat the process. 
But Jesus Christ, the ultimate sacrifice, his blood has been shed as the ultimate sacrifice to wash away the sins of the world. And we can see that in the book of Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 14. Our summary to this is the message of the gospel brings salvation to the whole world. So nothing or, 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 or no geopolitical zone, no culture is exempted. It is the blood of Jesus that has come. Jesus Christ has come, used his blood to wash the whole world of their sins. And the whole world is the capacity or the power in the blood of Jesus is enough to wash away the, the sins of the whole world. The blood of animal will only work for one person, but that of Jesus Christ is for the whole world. Our conclusion to this is, if the Lord Jesus Christ saw the preaching of the gospel as unavoidable, then believers therefore have no excuse. He has promised that we will do greater works and he will be with us always. And we see that greater works than this shall ye do because he goes to his father and he's gone there. So that means what Jesus Christ did here on earth, the capacity, the ability is in us to do more than what he did. But we are using his name as that thing that will help us and energize us to do it and don't also forget he says that when you go there god is confirming his words with signs following so don't be scared all you have to do is just obey obedience is the key go out there preach the gospel use every means which which you have the social media platforms they are there for you to do what to propagate the gospel all you have to do is preach jesus and him alone him crucified and that's all you have to do so that you can fulfill the mandate and the commission with which he has given unto us and our prayer points today says father help all believers to preach the gospel of the lord jesus christ everywhere they go father the grace that is needed for me to preach the gospel everywhere i go irrespective of the skin tone irrespective of the cultures irrespective of accent irrespective of all those things father the grace that is required of me lord give unto me to preach the gospel in jesus name we are prayed precious father we pray today oh god that the grace that is required for us to preach the gospel everywhere we find ourselves or anywhere we find ourselves lord give unto us in the name of jesus and as you've said you will confirm your word with signs following in your name we will cast out devils we will drink any deadly thing it will not harm us we will lay hands on the sick and they will recover all the signs you give unto us and above it all the empowerment from one eye the Bible says, and ye shall receive power after the, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. We pray for the baptism of the Spirit, baptism of the Holy Ghost, to energize us, to equip us for this work. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Thank you so much for joining us today. And as we know that we've been blessed today, Nestle promises to be a wonderful time in God's presence. Don't forget to share this link with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe as God will continue to use you to propagate his gospel. By sharing, this can also be a means with which you want to also use to preach your own gospel to people. Not everybody will be standing in front of the cameras. Not everybody will have the pulpit. Not everybody will have the podium. But your money can work. Your shares can work. Can do that same assignment. And God will continue to energize and equip you. It is well with you. You will not die. You will not suffer. The lines will continue to fall onto you in pleasant places. The face of God will continue to shine on you and radiate on you. Go and prosper. It is well with you. God bless you.